I'm very fortunate that my hobby happens to be my business and vice versa. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy what I do. Probably the best way of describing my family or, or what we do is we, we are a family of artists and our cameras happens to be a fun fair. My name is Joby Carter and I'm a showman and I'm also a traditional sign writer. The wonderful thing about what we do here is it's all about being creative. We're hidden away here, most people don't know where we are and what goes on in our yard. And there can be a pile of wood one week, the next week it's been built into a panel for the fair, the week after that it's been coach painted and then it comes into me and me and my team, namely me and Aaron. We decorate it and sometimes mum doing her scenic paintings and we bring it to life. Growing up as a, a young boy, I had a great love and respect for the artwork that was created on the, on the fair. Some of the artwork we have on the fair is old original stuff. Most of it is stuff we've recreated in the style of because we need the artwork to be fresh and vibrant. Um, old fairground art often is faded and it's been varnished to the extent where it goes so brown you can't, you can't depict the colours as they were intended when they were first done. We like to do stuff as it came out of the factory. Um, but as a kid I was fascinated with the colours and, and particularly with the sign writing, with the lettering. I was very fortunate that I was taught when I left school. I uh, went to do an apprenticeship with Stan Wilkinson. I'd sit there every day, mark out, and I'd sign right on glass. The reason it was done on glass was because it was easy to wipe off. You didn't have to paint a board every day. You'd get a razor and wipe it off and do it again. And it might take me two or three hours to do a bit of sign writing, sort of two and three inch lettering. And at the end of it, Stan, it was, very genteel, kind man would criticise it and I would wipe it off and I'd do it again. And I made some glaring mistakes, I made repeat mistakes, but the point was, in time I got better. I did a lot of second coating, so I'd assist Stan and that would speed him up and that would be good practice for my brush strokes. And along the way I appreciated, it made me appreciate what a tremendously skilled job it was and why it was such a long apprenticeship and mine wasn't a conventional seven-year apprenticeship mine was ongoing if you like it still is ongoing I still, I'm, but now I'm more teaching myself <laughs> and I teach other people but you're always learning something and when you teach other people it highlights why you do something and how you do it and uh, kind of makes you enjoy it more really um, it, <laughs> It sounds arrogant, it, kind of, it can make you feel really cocky when you show someone, you think, oh yeah, that's quite good, that. <laughs> that is quite hard to do that. But then I can remember when I learned and how hard it was to make your, make your S's look right and make an O look round. And there's so many, so many facets to it that unfortunately are, are dying because there's not the demand for it. So people can't learn commercially because there isn't the work at the end of it to justify doing it. There's been some wonderful artists, Edwin Hall, Sid Howe, father and son with the same name, um, Duffield, uh, who was a lovely painter who, who, there's some beautiful examples of his gag tickets that, that have survived. And he was really prolific, he knocked out some work and he had this style that was fast and thrown on there and slick brush strokes. Really love his work and a lot of my sign writing is inspired from, from his. I just thoroughly enjoy the art form and trying to recreate what the masters before me did. Part of the decoration I do is lining, which often people think is boring. But if you do too much of it in one go, it can be quite tedious. But by and large, I really love it. And I love it because I'm good at it and I can do it very fast. Um, if you take my swing bow legs, for example, they're 18 foot long and the legs are just 
shy of that. So the, the, the lining's about 15, 15 foot, the decoration. And there's two lines on each side and there's four sides. Do the maths, that's a lot of lines because there's 14 legs, there's the beams up the top, there's the stays that join the legs up and there's the boats. Um, there could be a mile of lining on that one ride. I haven't worked it out exactly. Now bear in mind, I've done those twice since I've had them. The steam yachts, I've done them three times. The little swing boats, I've done those twice. And numerous living wagons I've done once or twice. I'd probably be well on my way to Scotland should I decide to do a straight line from here to Scotland. Although I'm proud to perceive myself as a Victorian in the 21st century, the truth is if I was a Victorian with my abilities now, for which I'm proud of what I can do, I'd actually be pretty run of the mill. There's a, the, the skills we, we do now, which are so rare and people struggle to find, there was Hannah Penny back in the day. If you look at old photos, the sign writing was beautiful. Um, and there were so many sign writers because there were so many signs that needed to be written. I mean, if you look at all the transport on the road and every shop you go in with a plastic sign above it, well, that shop once upon a day, its predecessors, it was hand done not done by a machine. And, and sticky letters on the side of transport, they would have been hand done. Granted, they wouldn't have been a 44 tonne Arctic, they would have been a horse car, but still things were transported and messages were conveyed and they were conveyed by, by hand. But I suppose it's like anything, if you specialise and you truly specialise and you don't get tempted by the vinyl letters and get tempted by the tape and you're a real purist like I am, if people want a job done and they want it specialists, then they've got to come to people like myself. So it's a nice position to be in. I started teaching fairground art in a form of a five day course about five years ago. Teach the basics, make people appreciate what a beautiful art form it is. And then by the end of the week, try and send them home not as a sign writer, but someone with a love for sign writing, who's got the ability to then, if disciplined enough and give themselves enough time, to help teach themselves. By teaching other people to sign write, it really made me appreciate the art and being a room full of people that, that obviously are interested in it. Because it's quite esoteric, there's not, there's not many people in the world, there's a very small percentage of people that really give a monkeys about something that's basically died out. A couple of years ago, I was invited to place some work in the Museum of Everything. And it was, it was very interesting, people's reaction when you take fairground art, which they can come and look at for free, and you put it in the walls of a, a museum, and it suddenly makes it more in vogue, and people suddenly actually stop and look at it and appreciate it. But there's a huge satisfaction in making things yourself and creating things that outweigh the, the bad back and the worn out fingers. To my mind they do because I feel you go through life feeling more complete and happier, having actually achieved something rather than just typing in numbers on a computer. And that, would, uh, that would never be for me, not personally. <laughs> if someone asked me what my profession is, I say showman. I sign write, and my sign writing has got showmanship. But if someone, I think, forced me, it would be sign writing and decorating, because I, I love it, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. I have to take the fare out and travel it to be able to pay to afford my, my habit, if you like. But I love them both, really. I wouldn't change anything, not for the world. <laughs>